please join me in welcoming the Honorable Todd Rakita. Thank you, Vicki. I appreciate that. I haven't been in politics, I like to think, that long, but I've been in politics long enough to know I should just, at this point, shut up now and sit back down after we're introducing Brian. <laughs> Uh, that was very nice and, and uh, undeserved, but thank you very much. It's an honor to serve the state again. I didn't think I'd be back in politics, but um, some things happen, and, and I, I don't want to sound arrogant at all or blasphemous at all, uh, but you wonder sometimes, you know, why or how or if God puts you in some places for a reason. And uh, Kathy and I feel that way uh, uh, right now. Um, I uh, was very pleased to look at your website. I had not known about this group. Of course, I knew a little bit about Vicki and Moms for Liberty uh, because they're forces to be reckoned with in a, in a very good way. Uh, but I was so pleased to read the website and, and, and realize that there's people who are thinking and doing like I think and do. And I don't know if, if, if you all feel the same way. Uh, but I was immediately drawn to this group because of what I read online. So I am very interested to take my seat soon and listen to Brian as, as well and learn. Um, I'm not a member of CUPS, uh, but that changes tonight. I didn't, get, I, didn't get to the, I didn't get to the part of the website that, to learn what the dues or donations were, but um, so I'm gonna guess here and if you think the amount that Kathy and I are gonna to pledge tonight is too low, just remember that as much as I love my job and we do this as a family effort, you all don't pay that much. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, the donation is gonna be 200 bucks and from, from our family because I so much appreciate what you do. Is that, does that cover the dues? Does that cover, okay, all right. <clears throat> it's also a long way of saying, and the father and I kind of have this shtick now, uh, where um, I say, you know what, appreciate you being here, appreciate those who raised their hand and said they were members. For you that didn't, raise your hand, please join this group. Please help them out. Please get out of your comfort zone. I appreciate you being here tonight. It is absolutely wonderful. But we're in our comfort zone. This mic is easy tonight. What we're going to hear is easy, it's going to be soothing, it's going to be comforting, it's going to be energizing. Now go have that conversation with your neighbor, right? Not in a mean or nasty way, we don't want you to get into fisticuffs with anybody, but this is mission work. And again, at the risk of blaspheming, maybe I, I, call, I think it's opalistic. Maybe this is where we're at, we're in the streets fighting for every soul, and not just in a religious way, but in a civic way. So give. We need your money and we need your time. And like I asked before, Father, did I pass that class in seminary? I mean, is that good? About the, about the asking for money? Okay. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> um, so I had some remarks tonight, but I've, I've eaten into those already. So we're going to kind of bypass that and just say, look, a little report from the office. Uh, those religious liberty cases are proceeding. Uh, we joined with what we call amicus briefs, which are called am friends of the court briefs in both those uh, diocesan cases. Uh, in the Ron Colley case, uh, oral arguments were uh, just occurred in May before a three-judge panel of the Seventh Circuit. So we should be getting some news soon. In court terms, that could be 30 to 60 to 90 days. So, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's glacial. Uh, and our Indiana Supreme Court uh, has the cathedral case on its June docket. And so uh, we've uh, filed those briefs as well. Now, we're not representing the church necessarily, but we've intervened in a way with these amicus briefs, and we're, we're honored to do that. And Vicki's also right. We, uh, we do focus on the most precious of rights, God-given, and that's the right to life. Um, so after religious liberty, you see us, or before religious liberty even, you see us spending a lot of your tax money, all jokes aside, on these cases, and we get attacked for it. Why are we defending that goofy Indiana statute and wasting taxpayers' money? This isn't what the Attorney General's office is supposed to be about. Well, um, you elected me, 
you elected me by a wide margin. Until you get rid of me, we're going to focus on, right, on life issues. <laughs> Because as you heard Vicki say, it's personal. It's personal for Kathy and I and Ryan, who's in the back. Ryan, give a big wave. Come on. That's all right. Ryan is the younger brother to Teddy, and he has a life like most younger brothers do. He's here tonight because I invited him, as I do most times, to critique me on the way home and the remarks that I gave. <laughs> so all of a sudden, this 12-year-old from St. Malachi is going into seventh grade. He's all about coming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but Ryan's older brother, Teddy, if he walked in the room right now well, with Kathy, he wouldn't do it well. It would look like he had some kind of acute cerebral palsy. And he's 14, and he hasn't said a word. He can't. He's got diminished intellectual capacity. He'd come up to your table, and if he had any cookies left, he'd eat them. <laughs> um, He'd also give you, especially if you need it, and it's uncanny how he knows when you need it, but he would give you the best and biggest hug that you've ever had. And that's how we know Teddy with Angelman Syndrome is gonna change the world. And he'll do it one hug, hug at a time if he has to. And I'm not gonna stand by and let anyone tell me that his life is any less valuable than anyone else's or anyone in the room. <laughs> So we fight for Teddy, we fight for all life, from its beginning to its natural end. Uh, we also fight for kids. I mean, I've never thought I'd say it, but to see what they're getting taught in schools, and it's not just public schools, it's public and private, depending on which ones. And so we have the Parents' Bill of Rights. Uh, what, what I saw uh, last year, parents for the first time, American parents for the first time, Hoosier parents, for the first time in a long time as group getting together and getting involved in parenting. Because when you go to a school board meeting, when you pay attention to their education, when you do all those other things that parents do, as my wife has to remind me, you're parenting. And that's the first job of an adult. And, and, and so when I saw, after being the, 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 the K-12 education chairman for six years in the House of Representatives and going through all those battles, and I saw parents not being interested for so long, and I saw this, I thought, we gotta encourage this. We don't want them hauled away by an SRO or other police officer like we saw in Virginia. We want them empowered. So we came up with the Parents' Bill of Rights, and it's in its second edition. It's some good night table reading. It's 56 pages in question and answer <laughs> format, and you will be empowered to go to your school board meeting and otherwise parent. And uh, we're having a third edition come out now, which is going to talk about school choice. It's going to talk about religious liberty in your schools, along with all the other issues. So we're, so we're doing that. And then I just want to end up, as I get ready to finally introduce Brian, to, to say we need to pray and we need to thank and we need to pray more for our General Assembly. They did a good thing when they overrode the governor's veto. Um, they did. They did. They also did a good thing when we noted in the Bill of Rights that, and I didn't know this, but did you know? Now remember, your school board, by and large, is elected. You elect them. Um, you can't speak before them unless they say you can. Now imagine a bill going through the General Assembly or the United States Congress without a hearing and no public input. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> wait a minute. Um, right? So the general, after pointing this out, and, and they did that. They, they made it um, uh, the law that uh, for at least two or three minutes, um, parents get to address their school board and ask questions. It has to be civil, of course. Of course, why wouldn't it? Uh, but that's, that's a change. They deserve credit for getting that done. Those two things being said, that's low-hanging fruit, guys. There is so much more that could be done. But ultimately, like the pro-life issue itself, um, we can legislate, we can legislate, we can legislate. But it's not to make these actions or this behavior illegal, it's to make it unthinkable. And, and you could say, hey Todd, we've hired you to do all this and go do it. I will tell you this, if you wait for me to do all this or other like-minded politicians, I like to say public servants, we will lose. I got back in the battle, I left the private sector, we're doing this. 
But if you, and this is where the mission work comes back in, if you don't all fight for this stuff, if you don't, and this is where republics are hard. This is where republics are very hard. You don't get to just work and go home, unfortunately. Work your butts off and go home. You got to keep the republic, like Benjamin Franklin said all those years ago, if we're going to have such a thing. And it takes a lot of work. And, and so that's why this group is so important. That's why it's deserving of your money. That's why it's deserving of your time. Because this country is worth keeping. Uh, because our culture is worth keeping. So it's not just statutes getting passed by the General Assembly or anybody else. It's us taking back control of our culture, our lives, our country, uh, and bringing up our kids. And there, no one else can do that um, uh, but us.